If there is one question I have been asked more than probably any other question about a specific toy in the collection during the eight years that I've been on YouTube, it's the moment that I showed the Buck Rogers Mego Starfighter in a cameo in another video, and then eventually did the dedicated Buck Rogers two-part feature, where the inquiries about this particular vehicle just exploded. And then after that, when I got the Battlestar Galactica upscaled Viper from Rob, I posted a picture on Facebook showing the three iconic toy vehicles from the late 70s, the X-Wing, the Buck Rogers Starfighter, and Rob's upscaled Battlestar Galactica Colonial Viper. And once again, the questions started flooding in about this starfighter. Who made it? Where can I get one? Where did it come from? And I keep wondering, was it just that rare back in the 70s when it was made by Mego? Or is it just something where everybody just kind of forgot that they made one and they're always assuming that it's some fan project? But the Buck Rogers Starfighter was an actual Mego product and it had action figures to go with it as I outline in the Buck Rogers part two of our two part retrospective on Buck Rogers in the 25th century. It's no surprise that Rob quickly figured out probably from that post and maybe just from his own love of late 70s science fiction that the Buck Rogers Starfighter was in high demand and low quantities. It took me a long time to piece together a complete vintage Mego Buck Rogers Starfighter. And then after that, I had a shell left over, basically a husk. And my friend Andrew sent me one of the front cannons that I could use to start rebuilding that one. And then eventually I just said, you know what, this is gonna be next to impossible. I might as well try and find repro parts. And so I went through a guy who called himself Hot Dogs. He, he made and still makes, I believe, great repro parts and sells them on eBay. And he had made all of the peripheral parts for the Mego Buck Rogers Starfighter. So I completed that shell with Andrew's nose cannon and those parts. And then I thought, well, I've got, you know, a Buck Rogers fighter for Buck and I've got one for Wilma but that leaves a lot of other people still out in the cold. There are clearly not enough of these to go around and certainly not enough with parts intact. And Rob put his talents to good use and he recreated the Mego Buck Rogers Starfighter. I mean, just poof, just recreated it. As I said before, Rob's just like, I do what I want. And he just did this. and. It is mind-blowingly accurate. I know you've heard me say that about the Viper. I know you've heard me say that about the Cylon Raider. I know you've heard me say that about the Land Ram, but there's no other way to describe it. This thing is dead to rights. It is the Mego Starfighter uh, of the Buck Rogers 25th century toy line better than we remember it. And I know that because I have these other two here to compare it to. I have one that's 100% vintage original. I have one that's a vintage shell with repro parts put on it. And then I have Rob's all original one. It's mind-blowingly good. Mind-blowingly good. And the greatest part about it is that Rob looked into the shortcomings of the design of the Mego one because we are all fans and toy collectors. Like I said on the Cylon Raider video, this is where a fan's experience with the toys from childhood comes into play when redesigning these and recreating them. You know, Rob looked at the landing gear on the front, which is notoriously fragile, and he also looked at the hinge for the canopy. And he said, both of those need improvement. And he improved them in his rescan of the toy. In his redesign of the toy, he improved those pieces. He also beefed up the wings and the wing connectors underneath underneath the ship. Not in any way that is inaccurate to its, its look. He didn't change them. He just made sure that they were far more robust in the way they connected to the ship and their durability overall as parts. And I gotta tell you, the fit and finish on this thing is just amazing. It, it's amazing. This, this landing gear right here, 
it fits right up into the ship. There you go, like it's, it's locked in there, it's not coming down. And then when it does come down, it is on a much more uh, solid hinge system than the original. You know, it's not gonna snap on you or anything like that with just normal use. These other ones you have to sort of treat with kid gloves. And even, even the hot dogs part is, is reinforced uh, for the vintage Mego one compared to the original, but he still maintained the proportions of it because he had to, because he was working with the original Mego shell. But Rob has, has decided I'm, I'm working from what's best for the toy. Uh, and he has really nailed it. I mean, canopy is solid, opens up nicely. You know, Buck fits right in the cockpit, just like he did in the original. Why on earth anybody at this point is going to is going to balk at reproduction is crazy. You know, the, these toys are not going to last forever. The the, the vintage ones, um, mine have problems because the Mego ones just weren't that well made. You know, you talk about you know none of these toys were designed to last forty plus years. The Mego ones certainly weren't looking toward the future. The only reason they still exist at all is because they're made out of plastic and plastic does take a long time to go away. But the parts and the fit and the finish, I, I mean, I, I'm not ashamed to admit, one of the back engines on my Starfighter, my all original one is split. And that's a really common problem. I mean, I have to keep it on there with a small zip tie that goes around the, the engine. Rob's fit and finish on this is solid, you know, and that's one of the big advantages. You're getting something brand new that is working exactly like the Mego one worked and accommodates the figures in the exact same way. But what you're also getting is you're getting engine caps and front cannons that are not made from splittable flimsy plastic. They're made from the same robust uh, resins or whatever plastics that he's using in his 3D print. And they fit great, you know, they, they, they really snap on there or slide on there with, with good friction. You know, they're not going to just fall off when you turn the ship this way or that. Same thing with the fins. You know, the, if I pop this up like this, the fins aren't going to fall off. You don't need to like glue them in there or anything if you don't want to, which I haven't. Uh, that is often the case with the vintage originals is that those fins, if you pick it up, and you move it, those fins might fall off the bottom while you're moving it. It's just normal. That's just, it's just the way it works sometimes with the Mego fit. Rob's done an amazing job and he's done it for a vehicle that a lot of people love. This is a legendary fighter design and so many people want this in their collection, but they're just not enough out there to meet demand until now. And, and this one ends up looking so good. I, you know, the one recommendation I would make, and I was foolish not to do this before I got it ready for the video. Uh, when you get the piece, it comes with the sticker sheets and they are, uh, they are die cut ready for you to put the stickers on. I would wash the vehicle first before I attempted to do that because I did not. Uh, when you wash it, you'll get all the residual, um, surface debris off of it because it is a 3D print. And while it did show up clean, uh, I imagine if I gave it a good soap and water wash uh, and dried it and then, you know, let it sit for a day and then put the stickers on, they would adhere better because uh, my, my stickers are are not adhering, I think, because there's, there's surface stuff still on the, uh, the print. Um, but otherwise, I mean, I have, I have, all confidence in the, in this build and that that sticker thing doesn't worry me at all that was just me hurt in a hurry to get it ready i should have i should have exercised some common sense and i didn't um this was one that when he announced it i was immediately like ordered like i i i put my money down for this as soon as i could even though i already have two i put my money down for this because i've seen over the years how many people want this thing and, and if, if Rob's Starfighter ended up as good as his Viper or his Cylon Raider or his Land Ram, then this, this, uh, this drought for this particular vehicle would be over officially. It will be over. And I think I can safely say with it in hand, anybody who wants this vehicle now, they can get it. No problem at all. You can get this vehicle, no issues. There are some areas 
of the of the build that are different. They are different enough that any anti-repro person out there is is going to feel like they can sleep at night. Don't worry. Don't want to get your blood pressure up. Uh, you know, for example, there is a small detail on the back seat uh, of the Mego original, kind of like some uh, some ribbing, some vertical ribbing. Uh, that's not in the uh, version that Rob has made. The ribbing behind the seat is still there, but not the ribbing on the seat itself. And then the console detail um, and also the foot wells, the foot wells and the console detail, uh, the foot well detail is not there in the in the Rob version. And then the console sort of uh, instrument panel detail has been changed. It's a little nice in joke. It's actually, it says RDB in raised letters uh, so that anybody buying one won't be able to pass this off as an original Mego, which you really couldn't anyway, because it's such such a, a it's such a pristine, precise example compared to the Mego. You know, the Mego looks good for what it was back in 79, but it's immediately apparent that it is more of a low quality piece. You know, the plastic tends to yellow. The plastic was never a pure white like it should have been, like the fighters were in the show. I mean, this 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 thing flies circles around it in that respect. Uh, if If vintage is still important to you, then the Migos are still out there to hunt down and, and pay high prices for. But I think for the average sci-fi fan who just wants something to go with their Buck Rogers figures, this is it right here. This is it. Better canopy hinge, better, better fin attachment, better landing gear uh, design. I'm thrilled with this. And I wish I could display all three of these once I got new decals for that one because that other one with the repro parts on it is rough. But I wish I could display all three of these at the same time, uh, but I just don't have the room. So I actually am considering, given how good this one looks, putting this one and this one on rotation in the display cases. Honestly, I, 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 I really think this one's sharp. And it, it, it just, it's just so amazing that it is a fan-made piece. This is the future. Okay, the fans are doing the best work. And the links to this are in the description. So please, there's a message at the beginning that I'm sure you just saw if you were paying attention. And I'm saying it again at the end because on the last few videos, people weren't paying attention and they just wanted the link. And I was like, the link is already there. So pay attention when I say this. The links are in the description, not only to where you can contact Rob to get one of these, but also to Rob's own new YouTube channel where I'm sure he's going to be treating us to all kinds of, you know, behind the scenes, you know, behind the scenes special, you know, access on how he makes this stuff and, and does this stuff. Um, I cannot wait to be a part of that, uh, as that as that ramps up and gets going. So please make sure you read the video description below because it has all of the links both to Rob's YouTube channel and how you can get in contact with him to order one of his Battlestar vehicles or this beautifully recreated Buck Rogers Starfighter, which I know from eight years of experience online is in high demand and a lot of people want to know where to get one. Well, now there's finally a place. You don't have to fight the, the eBay, you know, labyrinth to try and find a battered up one and then hunt for parts. You can get one perfect for your display. Same size, same scale, everything. The fans are doing the best work. And if there was ever, if there was ever a smoking gun that said, you know, to the anti-repro community, stick a fork in yourself, you're done. It's this, this right here. This is the future because the toy companies aren't giving us what we want. Uh, and they, you know, you either learn or you, you're forced out of the way. And the maker movement is teaching them and they're not, they're not listening. So, uh, I am thrilled to be able to own one of these. I, I bought it myself. Uh, I'm, I'm thrilled to support the maker movement. Uh, and that's what retro blasting is going to keep doing until the toy companies listen. Um, so yeah. Fans are doing the best work. See you guys in the next video.
Hope you enjoyed that, everybody. If you want to see more of Rob's amazing work, you can check out our review of his Land Ram here. And if you just want to see more fans doing amazing work, you can check out our playlist here. And if you want to sit here and yell at me that this is a repro and it's destroying the toy industry, I think there's something wrong with your Funkin' Wagnalls. <laughs>